And I invite you to stand if you are able to the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is a reading from St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in this field, but while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to a master, Did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? And he answered, An enemy has done this. And the slave said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at the harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, and gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. And he answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. And the weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Well, Mother Goose asks the question that many of you know. Mary, Mary, quite contrary, how does your garden grow with silver bells and cockle shells and pretty maids all in a row? That's how Mary's garden grows. But how about God's garden? How does God's garden grow in this life? Have you ever noticed that God seems to have an affinity for gardens at the very beginning? God created humankind, and God intended for us to live in the garden. The Bible calls it the Garden of Eden. So the very first part of Scripture talks about a, a garden. God loves gardens. Maybe you love gardens as well. How many of you have a garden that you're working on this year? All right. It's been a challenging year, I think, for, uh, for gardens. God has an affinity for, for gardens as well. Today's gospel parable that Jesus tells is dear and familiar to farmers and gardeners alike. Farmers contend daily with weeds, weeds in their fields, most uh, gardeners contend with weeds in their gardens. And we, as uh, gardeners and farmers, we, we can uh, realize this imagery that Jesus says, where an enemy with uh, this bucket of weeds is distributing the curse and kind of pacing the garden like a thief in the night and spreading, uh, spreading the seed of of, of weeds in places where we would like good things to grow. Now, I'm not a real gardener, but I was out last night pulling weeds out of my garden under my tomato plants and my pepper plants, and uh, I had a little late start in uh, my garden. I think I just planted it a couple of weeks ago, actually, so my green beans and carrots and peas uh, are still uh, working their way up out of the ground. And I'm not a, a real gardener, but I pretend to be. 
I like garden produce. But the interesting thing is that when uh, a plant uh, that you want to grow is in your garden and it's coming out of the ground, at least for me, I wonder, okay, is this a weed that's growing in the row? Or is it the carrots that I planted or the, or the beans that I planted or the peas that I, I planted? One thing is for sure that we have to tend gardens. Gardens need to be tended or else or else they'll become overgrown with weeds. And you oftentimes cannot just deadhead head and trim. You also sometimes, like this year, you need to plant and, and replant. It's almost inevitable. Weeds will mingle with the wheat. And that's the way it is. That's just the way it is. Gardens are hospitable to both the plants chosen by us and the plants that choose us. And I doubt that anyone likes pulling weeds. I don't like pulling weeds. I doubt that God likes pulling weeds either. But in today's lesson, Jesus tells a parable, and he says, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. And when the weeds sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. Gardens, I think, are maybe our most creative effort to control nature, to landscape nature according to our own design. But controlling nature is an uneasy truth with the powers that be. <coughs> Mary, Mary, quite contrary, how does your garden grow? With silver bells and copper shells and pretty maids all in a row. Well, how do gardens grow? How does your garden grow? The parable of the wheat and the tares tell us that there is real good in the world. And we are blessed to experience this goodness in the world. And there's goodness in the world because the good God put goodness in the world. But then the parable tells us that there is real evil in the world as, as well. So we're invited to live in this world that has these contradictions. We're invited to live in this world where there is both goodness and, and evil. And Jesus says this, weeds and wheat, let them grow together. Rich and poor, humble and haughty, let them grow together, Jesus is saying. Those whose thinking is similar and contrary, let them grow together, Jesus is saying. Joys and sorrow, laughter and tears, let them grow together in this garden that is God's. Virtue and vice, let them grow together in God's garden. It's not easy to let these things grow together. And Jesus really begs us to live patiently with the complexity that is ours in the garden where we find ourselves, where both good things and bad things evil things happen. Jesus points us away from our differences to the way we will live together. It's not either or in God's garden. It is a both and kind of garden. And of course, the sting in the story is when the farmer says, don't gather up the weeds now. Don't gather up the weeds now. Wait to harvest and they will be gathered up in other ways. And here, I think, is the point of Jesus' parable. Really, the ending of the parable, at least for me, is the point of the parable. The parable is about how we live in the face of noxious weeds. It's how we live in a garden where bad things happen and evil things are going on. 
confront it? Are we to fight with it? Are we to root it out and burn it up? The parable says there are two things wrong with this approach. The first thing Jesus says is that it doesn't work. It doesn't work to try to pluck up the evil because you can't clean up the world. If you set about rooting up evil, then you're going to root up some of the good as well, Jesus says. And then second, taking it upon yourself really shows a lack of faith that that's exactly what God will do at the end of history. We either say to ourselves, we don't trust God will do it, or we say to ourselves, we can't wait that long until God does it. And those are exactly the two responses, I think, that this parable is about. The parable is saying, God will do it, and we need, or we should, wait, because only God can do it without doing as much harm as good. So the parable is really about calling you and me to patience. Jesus is calling you and me to be patient in this garden in which we live. And I realize that none of us are real good at being patient. That is not a skill that comes readily for us. I think we know some people who are maybe more patient than others. I think we still know people in this world who want to take justice into their own hands. They want to see a field with conscious weeds in it and they're happy to kind of slash and burn the whole field. We know people that are impatient as well. I think more what the world needs is patient people who believe that God will finally do all that is necessary and in the meantime are content to faithfully tend to the garden knowing that everything in the field is going to be okay at the end. Now Jesus told many parables about the kingdom of heaven. This is being one of those parables. But the real parable, I think, is Jesus himself. This parable, this story, is a story about patience. But this story is about the patience of God in Jesus himself. In Jesus, we see God's patience. Jesus named and encountered the reality of noxious evil from the beginning of his ministry. Think about the story of Jesus' temptations when he was tempted by the devil, by the people. When he didn't, he didn't destroy the devil. He didn't live in kind of this fantasy field where there was only pure wheat. What he did was to maintain a faithful presence in the face of the devil, in the face of evil. He maintained this presence in it. Speaking the truth, empowering a community, modeling the fruits of the Spirit, bringing about reconciliation in the garden, and in every way, waiting until the time God's justice would come. Jesus shows us what patience is all about. Mary, Mary, quite contrary, how does your garden grow? Jesus, how does your garden grow? God, how does your garden grow? It grows with patience. And so considering God's love for gardens, considering God's love for you and for me, perhaps we should consider ourselves to be gardens. How does your garden grow? How does your garden grow? Or to put it another way, what kind of garden are you? You're no different than any of God's gardens. There's goodness found in you, but there's also some evil found in you as well. It's not so much to hope for, perhaps, that a noxious sinner like me at least could also in God's plan be a place of transformation. It's not too much to hope for in you as well, where both good and bad things grow. The cross says this to be true. The cross promises this to be true. Your transformation is possible 
the true one. Because the cross, Jesus' cross, says so. Let's sing our hymn together, children of the heavenly Father. 